if you want to rebuild your Delco Remy distributor and put electronic ignition in it. So this is the video that shows you how to do it. So here we go. Uh, thanks for coming today. Give us a hand. No worries, Jim. Uh, let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about the distributor itself. Uh, so what brand is, or manufacturer, should we say, is this uh, distributor that we're going to rebuild today for our 360? What can you tell us about it? It's uh, Delco Remy, which was actually, um, Delco Remy also made them for Chev. So um, that's why parts are still relatively available for them. Yeah, different. These are not as not the same as a Chev distributor, obviously, because different length and different gearing and stuff like that. But still, all the internal parts are exactly the same. Oh, it's sort of like so. The housing is virtually the same. Housing is AMC, and the gearing is AMC. But the um, the the points and distributor and all that sort of stuff is the same as Chev. Oh, GM, excellent. GM, GM. Good old GM. Okay, so today we're going to completely disassemble, uh, pull it all apart, and we're going to replace this little gear because uh, it's bung. And we've got an array of some new parts, a bit of clean space here so we can actually get into it. So what are we actually going to do? We're going to knock the pin out. What's the next sort of steps that we've got to do? Yep, so knock the pin out, which will get the shaft out of the top. Um, take the, uh, basically strip the top down, which is the rotor button off all the points and condenser and vacuum advance unit and that and then um, we'll pull all the weights and stuff apart I'll point I'll pull it, pull it right down to every individual item and then you'll see it um, spread out then and we'll just literally clean it up and start putting it all back together with the new electronic ignition oh, awesome okay well uh, let's get into it eh? get into it here we go so Gary what tools are we going to need to uh, get this job done today if someone was going to do it at home Pretty basic, really. Just uh, a couple of screwdrivers, pin punch, hammer, that's and some feeler gauges. That's pretty well where we're at. Okay. Is that sort of right? That'll do it. So in this process of the rebuild, we're actually putting electronic ignition in, is that correct, Gary? That's correct, Jim. Get rid of the points and, um, I mean, points work well, but as you know, maintenance thing. Oh yeah, one less thing we have to worry about in the tuning process. One less thing. I've used the uh, electronic ignition systems, these ones here, I've used them quite a lot in these applications and um, I've had no issues with them at, out, at all. I quite like them. Okay. And they're a very easy install. Easy and effective, that's what we want. Easy and effective. And I've got some 60s models cars that I actually use them because Delco distributor, whilst the Delco distributor had changed externally, internally they were the same. Oh, okay. Give that a quick check. The old blow trick. Suck. Oh, the suck. <laughs> so you got it sucking. <laughs> Been told to suck a <laughs> lot. <laughs> That was that little, there's a little clip there. Simple as that. 
Man, it's not taking you long. Yeah, there's not much in them really. That one there, and then under here, just under here, that's just a little felt pad. Oh yes, it's sort of like a seal. Right. And then mm -hmm. under here, a little cover. Yeah. Now in there, that's high temp melting, a high point melting grease. Okay. That's actually grease in there. Okay. Do we so, need some that I haven't got, or you've? No, uh, there's you've... actually that's still full. Okay. That's still full. That'll be actually fine. Okay. Good. We are apart. There's the bits. So this is all the components completely disassembled, and it took the whole of about two and a half minutes. So let's clean some of these parts up, and uh, might even give some a bit of a paint job, and have a brand new one when we put it back together. So here we go. Nice heavy runs. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, so we've got all these uh, parts. We put a bit of clear coat on the old doodad there and don't mind the runs, but uh, being clear, you can't really see the runs. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got a little bit of black on the old vacuum advance and all the new components. So we're going to quickly go through the assembly process and Gary's going to run us through. Well, first of all, mate, um, these are the instructions for the, uh, for the, uh, oh, for the ignition electric, system. Electronic ignition system. Well, real men don't need instructions, well, do they? So, well, the first thing we do is that. Okay. <laughs> so for those who've never done one, the instructions probably are helpful. The instructions are helpful if you've never done one before, but yeah. I've, I've done a few of these now, so we should be good. Okay. We should be good to go. <laughs> If not, I can always refer to the ground. <laughs> yes. Well, anyways, <laughs> so what's the what's the most important parts as we do the reassemble of the whole distributor? Um, things we have to keep in mind. Literally, putting things back together is quite uh, quite simple. Uh, it's just any of the any of the little rub points where any of these little pieces go onto. Okay. Um, and until such time as you get melting the melting grease to start greasing up, we've just got to grease the shaft. So I just I just like to use the copper grease. Oh yeah. For that. No particular brand. No particular brand. As we, long as it's got copper. We'll hide that. Okay. So it's a, it's an anti seize copper so, impregnated sort of just a type of... just a copper grease. Oh, yeah. Yep. It uh, it's for high temperature stuff and things like that. So. Yeah. So it doesn't matter whether it's higher low performance as long as it's in there yeah and you the, don't smother it we just put enough on there to give it some um lubrication to start basically oh yeah. a longer life longer life that's it excellent so the other thing we'll need to do is just check the bearings in here so oh, it's sort of like a just, bush type thing there's, up there. there's bushings in there and that's actually really good both ends there's no wear in that at all that's actually okay. really good so okay We'll be right with that. Good. All right. All right. Well, so the process itself won't take too long, so I think I'll just get into it. Yeah, you go for it, and I'll just uh, play a bit of funky music. Play a bit of funky music. <laughs> <laughs> That there is the earthing strap for that plate, so you need to make sure that that is back on. Okay. Crucial part. Crucial part. Mm. 
Lubing the big shaft. More crucial than the groove. Oh yeah. Sort of like a grease line, isn't it? It is. when it picks up speed, when the shaft spins faster, those little weights push out. Yeah, so when it's turning on the engine, so that's it's obviously it's turning. Yep. When you get the advance, it flicks them out. Ah, uh, okay. So what that what that does is it then it causes the motor to, to change your timing. Oh, okay. So that's a mechanical advance, that's vacuum advance. Okay, so they work hand in hand or? They actually do work hand in hand. Uh, there's different ways of setting them up when it comes to that. And it depends on your application on your motor and which way you want to set it up for performance or economy or whatever. Okay. So with the modern day guys with electronic, uh, everything's electronic, it's controlled by your ECU. And, but with the old school, it actually works mechanically. So faster you go, or the more vacuum, it alters the timing. It alters the timing, but you've still only got a certain amount of a maximum advance, as, yeah. as with a modern car. They give you a lot of extra stuff in here that you generally don't need, but... Okay, better to have too much than not enough. Just in case. There we go. I'll put that in the bin. Yep, put that with the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> with that with the instructions so I'll just double check the float on this how much we've got so what I'm doing here okay is lining up where the roll pins gonna go yep in that little hole you drop down the bottom so you can see that right there yep it's actually I don't know if you can see, can you see yeah, it there see, see it how there. it's slightly out yep which is fine yep because by the time I bring that back down there mm -hmm. Oh, so you're actually trying to, oh, sorry, you're trying to work out the float, how much float movement there, there. How much movement there is in that. Okay. And at the moment, that's a bit too much. Okay. Oh, because we've got feeler gauges to try and work out the exact yeah. amount. So I've, the, the, the instruction booklet thingy there told me how much, but right. you know, I sort of remembered. The different models will have different amount of requirement for Correct. float? Um, this particular, yeah. Oh, there, there, there's sort of a, a set amount, but as long as you've got a little bit of float in it, okay, then we should be right. So sometimes we do need the extra ones. Oh, a couple of sh different shims to get that float to get, right. To get the float right. Okay. So put that back into there. See how much we've got there. doesn't look much but it's a fair bit still oh so we'll get a couple of old gal washes and chuck in there <laughs> that's it okay so i had to go and get another couple of sh or another shim it needed it needed an extra one in there okay Got three in there now beautiful so uh, now we'll put it in and double check our positioning oh so that's uh, just tightening up the end float that's <laughs> correct that's so uh, Obviously, when the pin drives in, this won't move up and down. Yep. But that's to that's basically to accentuate that or to to limit that. Okay. To where we need it. Right. So as the whole shaft goes up and down. Yep. But yeah. So we'll drive that pin back in now and check so it. So say if uh, we didn't have the right amount of shims, what would happen? It would give you more float up and down. Is all that would do. So. This end, this end of the shaft here yep. would float up and down more. Okay. Which, when it comes to putting the electronic ignition in. This unit, yeah. This unit here, you've got an, what they call an air gap. So when oh, it's- Oh, like a sensor between a- I'll, I'll, I'll 
when, when we, we get, get it that. in, we'll get to it again. Okay. But literally, it's an air gap like that. Oh, okay. And you need a minimum gap on this system of 10 thou and a maximum of 60 thou. Okay. I set them a little different to that, but that's what our minimum and maximum is. So basically, by having that going up and down like that, yep. that's obviously exaggerated, but yep. that's pretty much what you're eliminating or reducing by adding okay. extra shims. So we're not missing signals or anything. Correct. Right. Or more accurate signal. It's a consistent signal, yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so we'll drive this in, double check our spacing. So to get that spacing right, other than those shims, uh, to check it, we just use the good old feeler gauges. Yeah, good old feeler gauges. Yeah, excellent. So we might have to give Jay to give me a quick hand, Jim, to oh, drive yeah. this pin in. I'll just put this down on the tripod, right and we'll, uh, we'll pop the we'll pin get in. Get back to that. Actually, if I get really close, you can watch you hit my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'll hold. You just hit the pin, not my fingers. I haven't uh, smashed any fingers lately. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> we've got to start. Okay, we've got to start. That's yep. good. Okay, so we're in there now. Yep. How much we've got in between there. And that's nice firm. That's 22 thou. So, go to a different location, double check there. Okay, we're good. So you want just a, just a very slight bit of drag on that, and that's all we've got. So that's good. Yep. So we, now we can drive that pin so in. Now and... we can put that pin all the way home. Okay. You say when? Are we there yet? Not yet. What about now? Not yet. Now? Bit more. Over now. Bit more. Oh, this is taking forever, Gary. A little bit more. Stop. <laughs> right. So it's flush on both sides. No, it's a tiny bit proud on that side. Oh, no. So, yeah, so you hit too hard. So, oh, so you told me when to stop. Now Just a it. little bit. Whoop. Well, that's good. Now we're flush on both sides. There you go. See? Uh, it's clean on every circus. There it is. <clears throat> Rightio. Okay, now we've got inflowed everything now. So all that is set up right. Yep. So now we start putting... The assemble the top part. Assemble the top part. So we're going from this, the old points, with the condenser, to electronic. Heaps easy, less drama. Okay, right. we got it in the uh, vice, so it's nice and snug and now we can assemble so, now so what's that bit Gary? slide the magnet ring over okay and put that up into place it's long bolts aren't they they are but they hold the cap on oh okay right oh instead of the factory screws instead of the screws that are in here which we'll take out which i'll take out now quickly flick your fingers jim oh hang on <laughs> hang on hang on hang on there we go. Okay. okay. So we got that. So with that up in place. You want to put my fingers on there? Just hold for a second. Yep. That up in place. We we'll put this unit in. And oh, that's the actual see. reader of yeah, the magnets. I'll just drop the wires through the holes and make it a little bit easier. Oh, there's a grommet or something for that there's in there. A grommet that I'll put in after. So watch oh, your fingers for a second. And they're designed to locate on where the points initially were okay oh yeah okay and then we get there oops sorry Someone's got in. big buffhead hands like me and always get them in the wrong spot always in the wrong spot now for the little bit more tedious part of getting all this together okay you want me to hold so that on a on a delco they actually give you a square and a round Okay, so you can't get them wrong. And if you look on here, you've got a square and a round. Oh, yeah, where it locates. So what that is is so you're always in the right firing spot. Okay. So like when it's top dead centre, it is top dead centre. Correct. So... Now, I put all this together. Mm -hmm. And then we've got to check it. And we may have to shim underneath these at the time. Oh, okay. When we get there. 
to give us a little bit less movement or right yeah so a little ring spanner fit in there or you want a socket a little ring spanner would fit in there that one won't quite well maybe no, you got this maybe when we get to the bottom of it so oh. i do have a little socket you don't want to do them up to the point where they're going to snap obviously not FT specs, just it doesn't need to be that tight, no. You are talking only plastics, sir. So. Mm. Double check, okay. So now I'll have to take it back out of the vice. So I can see how it's see how that's on a bit of an angle and how very close it is here. Yes. It's actually a very simple uh, adjustment on that one. Big hammer. <laughs> uh, that is grab the screwdriver yeah and pry off the back here oh you're off the cam lobe there's off the little. cam lobe and then oh yes yeah, squeeze it up bend it around and we're still a bit close because what you're doing is you're bending that there okay oh yeah it's okay. not affecting the sensor so not affecting the sensor at the moment i've now got way too much gap okay so now you'll get it a bit closer Let's get it a bit closer Okay, so that's got a pretty big gap there at the moment. So, but it's parallel. But it's parallel. Okay. So, now we do the shim with a washer thing. Now I'll have to, I'll have to shim this ring down. I'm pretty sure because if I grab the feeler gauges and put that at its maximum and find its highest point, which is there, and run that under. I guarantee that's way too big, way too big a gap. Okay, so, so we'll, now uh, we'll in the have a kit. See these little washers here coming oh, in yeah. the kit. Yep, they're actually specifically three sixteenth. They will go now. So I've now got to take this back off. Yes, and put them in between there to lower this ring down a little bit more. Oh, so the magnet gets closer so, to the sensor. So the magnet gets closer to the sensor. Okay. No worries, we'll, right. we'll, we'll fiddle with that off camera. Yep. You can see the little washer under there now, Jim. Oh yeah. Yep. All right, so all that's done is brought this ring down a little bit further. Yep, a little magnet ring. So now if I turn that around, you'll see, see how there's a slight variation in that ring. Yep. But that's, that's standard, that's how they'll, they work. Because it's plastic. That's pretty much that, because it's plastic. Okay, so now what we've got to do is find the highest point. So you push push the shaft all the way up. Yep. All the way up to make sure you get it to the highest point and hold it up. Yep. And then you turn around until you find your biggest gap. Okay. So that's... Which is about there by the look of it. And then with your feeler gauges... You then got to check your gap. Now it says a maximum of 60, 60 thou. Mm -hmm. I always do it less than that to make sure I've got room for it to go up and down afterwards once it gets a bit of wear. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go for 55, and that's 55 there, and that's that's got just a nice amount of drag on that. Okay. Just a nice. Uh, that's the that's the maximum. Then to go the other way, you pull it down pull it all the way to the bottom and hold it down yep and again turn it around until you get the closest point okay which to me is about there and then it says the minimum is 10 there but i always go for somewhere around 15 to make sure that i've still got that little bit of room nowhere near it nowhere near it so i've still got plenty of room then yep which means i'm not bottomed out at its minimum and I've got more room than its maximum that's it yeah. so you now what we do is uh, put it back down there just a little hold get a little rubber grommet and tidy it up tidy it up so that's where the original wires come out oh yeah it's as simple as that that's in that's in wires there we go. Beautiful. So I don't worry about trimming them or putting them on until it's in the car so you can find out exactly what length you want. Oh yeah. Comes, comes with your little terminals. 
and yeah. tells you in the instructions how to wire it up. What goes where? Which is quite simple. You'd think they'd give you one black one, wouldn't you? Well, one no. <laughs> so, Manufacturers, eh? From that point, what we need to do now, oh, it's blue. Oh, fancy one. Oh, it's blue. It's so shiny. It's so shiny. And again, they have a locator. Oh, yeah, the little and square look, tabby looking thing. If you thing. look around the edge of the distributor. Oh, there's a there notch. There you go. So the notch goes on the notch. The notch goes on the notch. And boom. And then with the Delco, push down. Oh, it just spins around and Turn it clips it around. It's in the place. Yeah, it's all right. It's there now. Right. It's there now. There we go. Done. Boom. All, for, all done. Ready to go in. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so we're all done, and uh, now all we're going to do is jam that back in the car and uh, put some leads on, and once we've done all the wiring, it's all good. Is that correct? Electrically, the distributor will work. So when we get to the point of having to electrically connect uh, the distributor and the rest of the motor, we'll uh, work out a day and do some wiring. Sounds good. So see you later, Gary. <laughs> see you, Dave. Thanks. And this is what we got. A shiny, fancy-looking... Everything new and tidied up and rebuilt. Distributor. Brand new gear on the bottom, all shimmed. So I can now jam that in the car uh, once we get everything else sorted and we're away. So big thanks to Gary from AMC Restorations and uh, we'll catch him on the next one for sure. So guys, if you haven't already, like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. And uh, put the leads on and we're away. That's exactly it. <laughs>